Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, as such, I was supposed to reach yesterday morning, but then Malaysian Air Airlines, they delayed flight for 24 hours, and I was in uh, Kuala Lumpur for a whole day. Yesterday I was online, and today I could make through the event. Uh, this afternoon, what I'm going to share with you is how can we convert any thrown out laptop or old laptop or maybe a Raspberry Pi or similar kind of device into a digital library. We have been doing this in Nepal for quite some time. The major problem in the remote part of Nepal is the connectivity. The connectivity is not reliable. If it's some time we have the connectivity, but it's not always available. Second, a quality educational contents are not always readily available to be used in the classroom. How can we support teachers, students, or parents along in the ecosystem so we can make them more resourceful with the digital content so they can consume a quality content whenever required. That'll be my objective for this afternoon. When we are talking about digital content, primarily we talk in two different dimensions. One, a local machine, and other in the server configuration. I'll be, I will start with the first, and later on, um, I'll try to connect with various different projects that has been there in the community, around the globe, and how can we harness that and put them together so we can make these classrooms in any part of the world with very minimal resources, a huge amount of digital content can be given to the classroom. Now let's talk about, this is, this is an old slide, I had updated that, but um, it's still okay, I'll be using the same slide. Uh, online I updated in the Google slide anyway. Uh, when, when we are talking about a library, we think of books, digital books. We think of audio content. We think of images, videos, software activities, and animation put together. A traditional library would only consider about book, but when it comes to a digital library, all those resources can be put together. And what sort of technology would help us manage this kind of content in local laptop or in the server setup? That is exactly what we're trying to explore. Who are the beneficiaries of this kind of project when we do? Teachers, students, parents, or anybody willing to learn can benefit from this project. Now, I guess the organizer would be sending you more updated slides, which I have already done. Uh, I have this access to one of those I updated a few days back. Uh, now let's talk about the book, digital book. I don't know how many of us, uh, we have used this uh, software called Calibri, which can be used either online or offline, or if, if you even set up in the laptop, immediately you can make your laptop accessible uh, in that particular Wi-Fi range and can be used. Uh, one of a great tool, it can be used in any of uh, the machine. It could be either a Ubuntu machine or Windows or Mac or anything, but it, it works. You don't need to be online. It works, helps you manage uh, plenty of different variety of book. It could be PDF books or uh, EPUB books or uh, Amazon books or uh, a variety of different books can be put together as a single repository. Now, this also helps if somebody takes up effort to organize books or make a collection of book and they want to share with their friends, it makes 
that lot easy in both the contexts, either physical file transfer or convert that Calibri, uh, your laptop into a digital server on a point and click. If we look into Project Gutenberg, there are thousands of books, but we are not going to read all of them. As a, uh, as a student in certain specific label, I am, if it's a high, high school student or a college student or a university student, they need and the scope of book is going to differ. They can collect the book according to the curriculum and then share with their community. Or teacher can make a library of book and share with the student, now they can take the advantage. Meaning thereby, now, Project Gutenberg helping digitize content and make it accessible, but that's huge. But now, managing it to a personal need into the classroom, now Calibri can help. It could be from any source, but I took a Project Gutenberg and we heavily use Project Gutenberg on that context because it's legal, free, and open and in the public domain. When we talk about audio books or audio library, LibriVox, I don't know if you have checked out with this project, LibriVox, what they do is convert digital books into audio books and these audio books are now available for uh, people to access them. Like sometime when we take our uh, time and space, we may not be able to go through the book uh, with every, every text. Or like let's say our context is our English teacher teaching a poem in a primary class. Robert Frost stopping by woods on this new evening. And then this teacher, wants to play that poem in some native speaker voice. Now LibriVox, you go into the LibriVox, you pick up that poem and then play in the classroom. Now that is a repository of a digital content but in the audio form. Like Project Gutenberg is digitizing content in the book, LibriVox is doing the same but in the audio format. That, that's going to be a great asset for teachers and students and alike. So there are uh, free public domain audio books available. LibriVox is one of a kind. Now, next, uh, from digital books to audio books, we also have plenty of video content available on the internet, so many places. Every next class, we may want to refer to this link or that link, but sometimes for a school or for a library, it is always good that these documentaries, videos, or small video clips, like you, you might be knowing with the TED videos, or I don't know if you have checked with ed.td.com. That is an educational repository of TED. TED volunteers around the world, they are making ed educational content like Khan Academy we know. But now, you see, in Khan Academy, we get thousands of videos. In TED, we get hundreds of videos. Now, but we got the video, but how can we make a library of, out of it? This project called Plex.tv is similar to having a Netflix server. In a local machine, you install this Plex and then build up a content of video from different sources now you have a library of video content available. You can share with, in the local network, you can share uh, with anybody who wants to access that. And now your laptop is turning to be a, a video library repository. And that makes this software, open source software, you can deploy that in Ubuntu or Mac or anywhere, mix your laptop into a library of video content. So instantly you can um, share uh, multimedia content. We talk about digital content, we talk about audio content, we talk about video content. Now, when we play with, now there are assignment, there are some pressure works, there are uh, images from different uh, walk around, and we need to organize them. In a classroom, when teacher starts using digital content, there are going to be a lot of digital content. 
Now, in order to organize and manage it, we could be using a specific application, but some of the application like Nextcloud makes it way lot easier. You, you can just snap and um, install Nextcloud as a promise, a snap package in the Ubuntu, and now your server is up, and now a whole school community can use to make their own library of any kind of digital asset. We talk about the book, we talk about audios, we talk about videos, or it could be any kind of digital asset. It could be software, it could be animation packages, it could be anything. Now, if you, if you know with the latest Nextcloud development, they come with the uh, image editor and AI and collaborative capability, and with the extension and plugin, it can be really rich. Now, you can also integrate Collabra and you can um, integrate um, editing ability into the next cloud. And one of a very, very handy tool. Um, it's a way lot powerful than Google Drive in many, many cases. But it's a local and there's no limit of the storage that you can always deploy. When we talk of the library, most of the cases we think about the book a digital book or audio book or video, and then uh, we talk about digital asset. But sometimes we need to consider educational softwares are also a part of a library. There were great initiative like EDU12 and Linux for Life by SUSE. SUSE Life was educational version. Uh, these, are, these projects are terminated now, but then there are other projects like Inless OS and um, there are a few uh, educational work. Or if we take a bit of our own time in a few hours, we can always customize and make our educational distribution with necessary educational packages, which is already available. Some of the great tools like Gcompress or Child's Play or uh, Celestia or Sugarizer, these are not only one application. Every single application, if I go in with the Gcompress, it has hundreds of applications for um, small kids in the primary class. Child play has dozens of activities. Celestia, if we look into a Celestia, it is a library of all celestial object that you can render, and you can also create a context like solar eclipse or lunar eclipse, or uh, you can visit any of this uh, terrestrial object. In a classroom, when you're teaching about Saturn or Jupiter, or you're teaching about any of a celestial object, you can seamlessly render, move around, create the demo, and you can use that in um, the classroom. Now, Celestia is, we can consider that as a library of celestial object. It's, it's one software giving us a plethora of uh, you know, access to you know, all kinds of celestial objects with whole uh, micro detail and it's mathematically modeled, so it's very precise and accurate as well. And open source, it can be deployed anywhere, be it even to a Windows, a Mac, or anywhere, even in your mobile phones. Sugarizer comes with, honey, you, we know about one laptop per child project, $100 laptop and kind of thing. Uh, the project might have been terminated, but the software, Sugarizer has so many activities that we can, as such, engage a uh, school student, either in the primary or low secondary or anywhere, and uh, people can take advantage of it. Analyst OS, I don't know if you have tried out. Um, the Analyst OS is, is kind of an educational distribution. Sometimes it's very big and bulky, nearly 32 GB of uh, stories to be taken because it, it puts up a lot of educational packages and content like um, Wikipedia dump, offline access of the Wikipedia and kind of thing, um, and it makes it a lot easier to, easier and accessible for anyone to access it. You can work, you can learn, you can play. Um, it's um, built at top of Linux and uh, it makes no. Putting all that together, you don't need to invest a lot of time, and they have done a real good hard work. Now, I talked about so many softwares. I talked about so many platforms. But if as a person, individually, I start making my own server for Nextcloud, I start making server for Plex, I start making server for Wikipedia, not that's gonna you know, cost me some technical knowledge, and some time and effort and kind of thing. 
Now, you can check out this project called Internet in a Box, IIAB, or Internet in a Box. It's, it's such a nice project, one line command that you can issue. If you have, you can run, just copy paste a bash script, and that runs Ansible on top of it, and makes any Ubuntu machine to be a digital library, complete, ready to be used. It'll take a couple of hours, it'll download all kind of content that you want, you can control what to download, what not to download, and not only that, it will configure this, all applications like Nextcloud, Wikipedia, Moodle, and uh, repository from Gutenberg, and from multiple community project, all that is put into a single laptop. If you have a space, maybe two TV or three TV or four TV hard drive, now you can download that content when you have the internet, and you can take that laptop in any remote setup, plug in into a router, now you don't need an internet, you don't need anything, but now in that local zone, anybody can access that laptop, and uh, that turns out to be a digital library, because it has thousands of books, audio content, video content, softwares, animation, and all that curated, developed, and used by educators around the world. We have seen the medical libraries. We have seen um, this kind of um, you know, low-cost Raspberry Pi-based um, libraries deployed in remote Africa or Latin America. We have done in Nepal more than 10,000 schools. We have deployed these kind of laptops. This kind of server, digital library server. Uh, there are projects like OED Nepal. A Ministry of Education has supported uh, this organization uh, to deploy that. And taking a, a small token money, um, me, my, my team, and then their team, and there are other community projects. What we do is uh, we take any machine available from the market, low cost. It could be 10 years old or 15 years old machine, and put you into in um, that uh, laptop. And at top of that, we run that one is one liner script of Internet in a Box. That's in the GitHub. We, you can just run the script over the internet. It will convert that Ubuntu machine to be a digital, digital library repository. And now that can be used by the school community if you just plug in into a router. Now in that Wi-Fi region, without even having internet, they can locally access that machine. Now, they have not only the content, but also various software that helps them manage knowledge, digital asset, manage collaboration, and it can be accessible in classroom at any point of time. Library in Box has all this, uh, you know, with the Moodle, the LMS learning management system, uh, teachers can create uh, their classroom, uh, class courseware, and integrate the content from the same machine, and they can reuse that package quite a lot of time. And in Moodle, uh, they have this uh, uh, project called, they can make point and click, and they can make various classroom activities and engage children. If they, they have accessible or few devices, children can be engaged into the quiz activity or uh, memory games, a puzzle or crossword puzzle, a uh, whole, whole lot of game can be made by teachers without any programming knowledge, just point and click. As by Peter Ork, that is our MIT project integrated into Moodle and various LMS that takes advantage of a huge lot of activity and content put together and class, classes can be more interactive, more productive, and people can take advantage of it. Similarly, um, this is, uh, I took this uh, few of applications from uh, Endless OS. It has a uh, project like Scratch that can be used uh, for teaching programming, TalksMath, the yet another uh, collection of mathematical games and activities to teach students. TalksMath is a wonderful uh, application as such. 
and uh, there are all the and uh, encyclopedia. I'll be talking about that a little bit later. So the whole idea was a low cost digital library can be built with old hardware, as simple as a Raspberry Pi, or any of the laptop that is not in use for our own reason. Maybe if you are a programmer, you want a high-end laptop, but you have all the old laptop in your um, home. You can convert that into a library, and then you can gift to any school, or maybe a small club or class, classroom, or any remote villages, and people can take advantage of it. So that we, uh, we have helped uh, people get access to digital content and help them manage the digital asset and enrich classroom experience. But while uh, talking all this, I missed one pro uh, project. I will just quickly mention that, and maybe I can take a uh, question and answer session. Uh, the next project is, I don't know how many of us we have used the project called Kiwix. Uh, what Kiwix does is, um, your Wikipedia content, when compressed, and you have a ZIM file, open ZIM file, and Kiwix is a reader for open ZIM file. And there are hundreds of uh, ZIM, uh, compressed ZIM files are available, and that can help you build um, encyclopedias, a variety of different encyclopedias with almost no technical knowledge. So the beauty of this kind of digital library or this kind of digital repository is it can keep growing and there is an administrative panel in the through the administrative panel you can enrich application you can enrich the content and you can uh, as such use that into the real classroom that is uh, that was like a bit of a overview of what we have been doing uh, in, in real remote villages where uh, internet is very, very limited only for uh, record keeping and updating purpose, operational purpose. Only administrative management, they use the internet. Not everyone can afford to use it. But this, uh, kind, the purpose of internet again is uh, access to knowledge. And if that knowledge, we can bundle up and put that into a laptop. Like even the internet, a limited bandwidth internet in the school, is not used overnight, right? So now if you have that, um, this internet in a box server set up, overnight you can update that and everyone can um, use the next morning and they can now download the content and take home and work on content, you know, and, and they can take advantage of it. The primary thing is not only about the content. Primary thing is about access to content and playing with the content, that's where education lies. And education is not only having the content, working with the content. And when children, they start working with the content, they start learning. And that's the beauty that we're having. Uh, maybe we can co collaborate more and more school can be enriched. Uh, this will be advantage in uh, various setup where resources are very, very limited but people can have access to the knowledge despite all odds. Thank you so much for your presence and time. If you have any query, I'll be more than happy to answer. Yes. How could you manage to deploy hundreds of those laptops of our local communities? Sorry? How could you manage to deploy hundreds of those laptops of our local school communities? Okay. Uh, there are two different approaches. One, governments, they know that uh, they have to invest in infrastructure. But when they have to invest in the infrastructure, they will buy, you know, dozens of laptops and they give. They don't care about what content the laptop has. They only care if it is having a word processing software or presentation software, they'll copy content from internet and put, put up that. Now we tell them having laptop is not enough. Make the laptop more resourceful so that teacher can use the content in the classroom. 
now we train teachers group of teachers and now they can make their own uh, library customize that and manage it most of the cases these teachers they don't know about what kind of technology to use uh, to make this kind of library you know and then we give you some hands on workshop that sometimes half day workshop or sometimes full day workshop depending upon the need and these people are given the skill set now once uh, normally uh, local government looks into a community of a school now they call these IT computer teachers or someone who is smart with IT and we train them and they go back in the school and they train more teachers to deploy that in mass the only alternate is we need to train more people that's only the alternate we have and uh, we make a modal server show them and then train how to make it is that simple did I answer your question any more queries do we have a question there uh, I didn't catch it uh, is there a name for this organization sorry is there a name for your organization if we have an organization uh, yeah is there a name yeah I mean uh, there are a few um, in Nepal there is an organization called OLE Nepal O L E Nepal but then that organization is also curating content from various community project if you look into this uh, internet in a box if you just Google that, there is a website, and there are hundreds of community putting up the content together, especially the educational content for various setup, books, animation, videos, all that, and the, uh, they also give that one liner uh, to set up the server. And okay. you don't need to know anything too technical. If you know how to install the Ubuntu. And you know, you can go in terminal and issue one command. That's all enough. Uh, you don't need to know any, any uh, difficult things about setting the servers and kind of thing. And this Internet uh, Box project makes it that simple. And in uh, Africa, Latin America, a few places, when they do, they also convert a Raspberry Pi and a hard disk. They attach a hard disk in Raspberry Pi and then uh, deploy this Internet in Box server. Uh, so that is accessible to the community, either clubs or community or school. Thank you. Any other queries? It's completely, everything is built at top of open source technology, so uh, it's hackable. Uh, we can take advantage of it. We can build at top of it. And we need to train people to use technology. Uh, I'm in here, the library. Yes. Uh, sorry, just now I saw you mention about the endless OS. So is it like you bundling with the endless OS or just uh, separate the internet in the box uh, with, uh, in the endless OS? Uh, I referred Android OS is one of educational package, you know. Android OS has done a wonderful work. Yeah. The team has done a wonderful work. Yeah. We can always take advantage of it. If you're having an independent laptop, you don't want to make server, but you want to enrich your laptop with the content and application, Android OS is a choice. So, no. you, so you mean now you are more focusing on the endless OS because it, I know inside got a Colibri and everything. So you just uh, set up the endless OS and go to the uh, rural area for the deployment? Uh, no, we, we do internet in a box. We do both. Oh, okay. Uh, we tell them, about, we show them endless OS, but the internet in a box is a Ubuntu server and internet in a box is a package that bundles up 
all kind of application, these all application, you know, uh, Nextcloud, Wikipedia, Moodle, WordPress, Gutenberg, and OpenGym, Calibri, all these are bundled package and with a single line of script that makes that server. Internet in a box is collection of server software, content pulled down into a local machine, so you can use that without internet, and a collaborative platform, a learning management system. All that is put together in single machine. Okay, uh, sorry, you have uh, working with any NGOs uh, with, uh, with other country other than Nepal? Uh, Oily Nepal is one NGO, working with ministry and local government, I'm a software developer and in my, as a hobby, as part of a hobby and as part of a training, I train people to take advantage of this and if they ask, I train them how to make it. And if they are not capable of it, I make overnight weekend and send this machine to those schools. No, uh, okay, thank you. I mean, uh, what I mean is like in future you're planning to to enhance these like uh, projects to the other countries, I means uh, it might help other yeah, countries. If you are interested, I'm more than happy. Okay, cool. I'm more Thank than happy you. to support. Any more quick? Sorry. Um, yep. So, uh, if I want to take it home and use digital content, can I download it from the server, singer server? Uh, meaning that by this is my uh, Internet Box server, and you are connected to this through a browser. Now you want to download any of the content that's available in the internet in a box in your laptop. Without setting up the environment, you only want certain content, either book or video, anything, right? Yes, you, you can always do that. So in the beginning, why did I break into these digital books or audio books or video content or software packages or animation packages because people might be interested depending upon the you know affinity into a certain category of uh, digital asset and at the end i put up this internet in a box as a server that bundles up all kind of content and repository into a single computer so a server is more applicable, useful for a school or a class or a family home. You can set up that in a home also. But for as an individual, you don't want to convert your laptop into a server and give access to other. So you can only consume the content that you want. Only maybe the book, few books or few um, audio content or few videos or software. So NLS OS is uh, more uh, for a personal use. Internet in a box is for group use. I don't know, in, uh, you know with the Freedom Box as well. You know, Freedom Box also takes up a similar approach to convert a uh, family server uh, for your email management and document management kind of thing. Internet in a box is also uh, making, converting any laptop into a digital media server. Thank you. Did I answer your question? Okay. I uh, don't have a question, but thank you for your work. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, please. Oh, I, I don't have a question, but thank you for your work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.